Hey, so the past few weeks we've been talking about solving equations, but our standard that we need to learn also says that we need to solve inequalities. What's the difference between an equation and an inequality? An equation has an equal sign. An inequality has a less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So it's really, you're going to solve the equation the same way that you've been solving equations, but it's not going to have an equal sign. It's going to have an inequality sign. First, we need to talk about what do these inequality signs really mean? And I need to show you how to graph an inequality so you understand why we're graphing it. So let's get started. Okay, so if we're solving inequalities, first we need to understand this is a less than sign. This is a greater than sign, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. I know you're thinking, Miss G, I mean, did, we learned this a long time ago, but I want you to know, and I've tried to make sure that every class I've had, when I was in third grade, I was taking one of those end of the year standardized tests, and the question said, what does this sign mean? And all they had were signs. There was no numbers. And I remember having a total freak out moment in the middle of my test, turning red, sweating, because I had never figured out how to read the sign without numbers. As long as there was numbers next to it, I knew which one was greater than or which one was less than, but I had no idea what the signs meant without the numbers. So I try to make sure that all of my Students know how to read an inequality sign, whether there's numbers there or not. So I didn't even figure this out until I was actually a teacher. So here it goes. You read words from left to right, less than. Well, you're also going to read these signs left to right. So from here to here, your number here would be less than. If you had a number here, the mouth would be open, and that would be greater than. So this would be less than, this would be greater than. And of course, we know this means less than or equal to. And we're going to talk about what does that actually mean in just a few seconds. So if we had a number line, and of course, we know that we have numbers that go to the right, and we have numbers that go to the left that are negative. If I wanted to see x is greater than 2, x is greater than 2, then I would put an open dot above the 2, and x is greater than, so I would draw my arrow to the greater than side. Now, why did I put an open dot? I put that open dot because it does not say x is equal to 2. So we know that x is going to be more than 2. So in other words, x could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 5, it could be 10, it could be 1 million. We don't know what x is, we only know that x is greater than 2, so it's more than 2. Now what if I had this same number line, and this time I wanted to graph x is greater than or equal to 2. If I were going to graph this, I would put a close dot above the 2. And it says x is greater than or equal to 2, so that means my arrow is going to go in the greater than direction. This is the difference between the two graphs. This one, x could potentially equal, possibly equal, three, four, five, 
anything above two. It, it could even be fractions, three and a half. It could be two and a half. Two and a half is greater than two. So it could be any of those numbers possibly. This one could be two. So we put a close dot because it says greater than or equal to. So X could possibly be two, it could be three, it could be four, it could be any number past the number two. So an open dot means just greater than or less than according to what your um, inequality says. It's open if there's no or equal to sign. If it does have the or equal to, it should be a closed dot because that means it also includes two. So it could be two, it could be two million. We don't know what X is equal to, but it could be two. Two or anything above two. So we just need to make sure that we're understanding exactly what that means. Let's try one more. And of course, these could be much bigger numbers. I'm just doing small ones for now. Let's put y is less than or equal to three. Let's make it negative three. If y is less than or equal to negative three, first of all, what kind of dot do you think we would need? I hope that you said a closed dot because this or equal to means that we need a closed dot. Now, this is y is less than or equal to negative 3. So which numbers are less than negative 3? I hope you said the numbers to the left because the numbers to the left are less than negative 3. So our potential answers here could be, because I have a closed dot, could be negative 3, it could be negative 20, it could be negative 1 million. We don't know. We just know that it could be negative 3 or any number smaller than negative 3. Okay, so why does this come into play? Other than because our standard says so. We have to, we've been solving equations. So if we can solve equations, we can solve inequalities. And our standard says we need to be able to graph them. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so this looks familiar except we've been seeing it with an equal sign. Let me make this bigger so you can see it better. This says x plus 2 is greater than 4. We've been seeing this for the past two or three weeks, except it had an equal sign. Now it has a greater than sign. So we're going to get rid of that 2. Our main objective is still to get that variable by itself. So we're going to do the inverse operation, which is to subtract 2 from both sides. This one goes away. We're left with x is greater than 2. So we could graph that. First I'm going to number my number line. X is greater than 2. So what kind of dot do you think I need? There is no or equal to there. It only says greater than. So you're right. We need an open dot above the 2. Leave it open. And if x is greater than 2, then x can be anything past the 2. It could be 1 half. I'm sorry, not 1 half. It could be 2 and 1 half. It could be 3. It could be 3 and 3 fourths. Any number that falls on that number line that's past the 2. Okay, let's look at the next one. This one says y plus 3 is less than or greater than or... I'm sorry, I'm getting my words all mixed up. Let me start over. Y plus 3 is less than or equal to 4. 
So first thing I know is I'm going to need a closed dot this time because it says or equal to. But the first thing I have to do is get that variable by itself. So this says plus 3, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. This one goes away. I'm left with y is less than or equal to 4 minus 3 is 1. So I'm going to put that um, some numbers on my number line. And it says y is less than or equal to 1. I know I need a closed dot above the 1. And y is less than or equal to. So I need to go to the left because that's where the smaller numbers are. So my answer could be 1. It could be 0. It could be negative 1. It could be negative 500. It could be any number that falls on the number line up to 1. Okay, let's try another one. This one says g minus 6 is greater than or equal to 4. I need to get my variable by itself, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides. This one goes away. I'm left with g is greater than or equal to 4 plus 6 is 10. Well, I have a blank number line. I could put whatever numbers I want to on here. So I can put my 10 here. As long as I put numbers on my number line that go um, to the left of that number or to the right of that number, I can do whatever I need to do. So g is greater than or equal to 10. So I know I need a closed dot because it says or equal to and g is greater than or equal to, so I need to go to the right because that's where the greater than numbers will be. So this says that g could be 10 or any number past 10 to the positive direction. Could be 25, could be 125, we don't know. We just know it could be 10 or anything greater than 10. Okay, let's skip down to this part right here. This says um, 4H is less than 20. So the first thing we want to do is get H by itself. H is being multiplied by 4, so the inverse operation here would be to divide both sides by 4. So that cancels out, and I'm left with H is less than... 20 divided by 4 is 5. So I can put 5, 6, 7, 8, and put some on this side too. H is less than 5. There is no or equal to, so that means my dot will be open. Because it's not 5, it's anything less than 5. And H is less than, so that means I need to go to the left because that's where the smaller numbers are. H is less than 5. So what this tells me is that H could be 4, it could be 1, it could be negative 30, anything to the left. It cannot be 5. Okay, let's skip down here to number 7. This says R divided by 2 is greater than or equal to 4. We need to get our variable by itself. R is being divided by 2, so I need to multiply both sides by 2. This goes away, and I'm left with R is greater than or equal to 4 times 2 is 8. So I'm going to put numbers that go to the right of 8 and to the left of 8. R is greater than or equal to. So that's a closed dot, and the greater than numbers go this way. So a potential answer here could be 8, could be 20, could be 1 million. I don't know. I just know it's greater than or equal to. Okay, let's do a little bit harder equations than what we're seeing here, some multi-step equations. So we have n plus plus 
uh, I'm sorry, n over 3 plus 2 is greater than 0. So we're going to have uh, a couple of steps here. So the first thing we do is subtract 2 from both sides. We're left with n over 3 is greater than negative 2. n is being divided by 3, so the inverse operation would be to multiply both sides by 3. That leaves us with n is greater than negative 6. So if n is greater than negative 6, oops, 5 negative 4. Okay, if n is greater than negative 6, then I'm going to have an open dot. And which numbers are greater than negative 6? That's right, the ones to the right. So your number could be, n could be negative 5, negative 4, it could be positive 20, anything greater than negative 6. Okay, let's look here. Okay, this says 1 plus m all divided by 9 is greater than or equal to 1. So right now our variable is being divided by 9, so the opposite would be to multiply 9 times both sides. This cancels out and I'm left with 1 plus m is greater than or equal to 9. Now I need to get rid of that 1, so I'm going to do a minus 1, minus 1, m is greater than or equal to 8. So I'm going to put numbers on my number line. Okay, it's greater than or equal to, so that means I need a close dot. And m is greater than, which means I need to draw my line to the right. Okay, let's look at this one. The first thing I need to do is get rid of the 2, minus 2, minus 2. I'm left with 136. I bring down my 8x is less than or equal to 136. I divide both sides by 8. So I'm going to come over here, 136 divided by 8, one time. Um, what is that? Six? Nope, I think it's five. Five, bring down your six. Eight will go into 56 seven times. Now I'm left with zero. So x is less than or equal to 17. So I'm going to put numbers down here to the left and right of the 16. Okay. It's less than or equal to, which means I need a closed dot. And if x is less than, I go this way. Okay. What about this one? First thing we do here is we've still got to get our variable by itself, but I see we have like terms. We have a positive 6 and a negative 5. So 6 minus 5 is 1. Bring down your negative 2n and bring down your greater than or equal to negative 11. Now we still need to get rid of that 1, so we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. Here I'm left with negative 2n is equal to negative 11 and negative 1. My signs are the same, so I combine them. I'm going to add and I'm going to get negative 12. Then I need to divide both sides by negative 2. And that leaves me with n is greater than or equal to 6, positive 6. So go ahead and put some numbers on your number line. n is greater than or equal to, so that means I need a closed dot. And n is greater than or equal to, so my arrow goes to the right. 